All right, guys, today let's talk a little bit about interfaces and what duck typing is in modern programming languages. So you might have heard that GDScript and Python use duck typing, and let's talk about how that can be a substitute for uh, using inheritance. So what is duck typing? There's an old saying, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck. So in programming, what does this mean? It means uh, an object's use is determined for, by its suitability for its task, not by its type. And suitability is determined by the object having a certain methods or variables defined, and not by specifically by the object's type. So all right, so in simple terms, what does that mean? So if object one is of type A and contains a method, say, like fly, and object two is a type B and has a method called fly, either one of them will be suitable to pass to this function noted here. Uh, this is in GDScript, where we have a function that accepts an object and calls fly on it. So it's really, really flexible. This can be any object type you want. And as long as it has this particular contract of having the method fly in it, you can use it. So super simple, super flexible, but very powerful. So some popular programming languages that have duck typing in it, Python, Ruby, we won't talk about either of those, and GDScript. You can also think of C++ templating as being almost like a loose version of duck typing, but it's not really because it's not runtime. Uh, that happens at compile time. Templates are, uh, have all the types resolved as uh, the compiler uh, goes through and resolves all those templating patterns. So it's not quite the same, but it's flexible in that regard. So uh, what's another way to accomplish something like this with interfaces, as we kind of touched on the first slide? So in Kotlin and Java, you'll see a more formal definition of how to use typing. Um, and you'll see a formal interface, like shown here with the fly. So it's a lot more strict. Um, you can implement kind of the same behavior that we showed before, where you are guaranteed that this object B has a fly method in it, because it both classes A and B implement the flying interface. But as you can see, this is a much more rigid pattern. Um, and it's a lot less flexible. So what are the advantages? Um, you're guaranteed that this will always have the fly method. That's you're always guaranteed that because that the compiler will catch that for you because uh, it's declared here as implementing these particular uh, interfaces, and this will only accept a, a object that implements the interface. So, like Kotlin in this example, will catch that for you if you made the mistake of passing an object that wasn't a flying object uh, that implemented that flying interface. So the disadvantage is it's not as flexible, right? Before we saw that in uh, the GDScript example, uh, if it, any object implements fly, it'll just work. So let's say we had some other type of interface that also had a fly method in it, and it wasn't at all related to flying. This would not work. We'd have to have some other pattern to resolve that and make that work. So it's a little bit less flexible, and it, you know, it, so, so there, there's, you know, there's a give and take to this. You, you may find that you need this rigid style, and you know, it, for cases where you have an architecture that is very strict. Um, but for game scripting, sometimes you don't really need something like that. And there's a lot of cases where you may not need a lot of rigid uh, types. Okay, so duck typing. We pretty much talked about some of the advantages here. It's super flexible, right? So you can just pass anything you want as long as it has those methods. It'll work, right? Uh, refactoring is a breeze. You don't have to worry about organizing a lot of template patterns or interfaces and things like that. If it has what you need when you're calling that particular thing, it just works, and it resolves at runtime. So disadvantages: uh, you can lead. They can lead to disorganized architectures if you're not careful. Um, and you might make mistakes. You might call a method that requires that, say, that fly method um, on an object, and maybe that object doesn't have it, or you change the name of the, the, the method. Things like that that you won't catch before um, you actually run the code. So to get around those problems, I really suggest having a lot of good tests um, automated if you can, um, or at least you have a lot of good manual tests. But yeah, automation is, has its weight in gold if you have a lot of code. So try to do that if you can. Um, I might do a tutorial on that later. Um, and uh, another way, so 
there al there should always be in a duct typing language a way to check at runtime if an object has a method or a property that you need to have. So, for example, in uh, GDescript, you have a has method uh, function to check to see if it has a method, and the parameter in it is a string, and it's just the name of the method. Um, but you can check to see if uh, that exists before you call it. But of course, um, that's a lot of extra code, so it'd be best if you just um, fail fast and probably have tests to weed this kind of stuff out. So you don't have, to have a lot of rigorous checks in your runtime code. And it also saves on performance. Um, but if it's not possible, you have tight deadlines. And maybe you can just have the checks uh, in one spot up in the call hierarchy. And it's not necessary to do duplicate checks down if possible. Okay, so now we can kind of show an example in GDScript. And it's pretty simple. All right, so in this example, uh, we have a few classes. And this is kind of going off the theme of duck typing. So we have things that are sort of like a duck, not really. But in, with some birds, uh, we have a duck class, we have a goose class, and we have an ostrich class. And for whatever reason, they all have a quack method in them. Um, so you can see it's pretty flexible in that we can just have this uh, array and just append these objects, these new objects here. Um, to this array. And then uh, if we wanted to call a quack on every object in the array, that's what this for loop does, is a arranged for loop, it'll just work. So I can just run that to show you how that would work. Uh, but you can probably take a guess as to how. And so for each type, it has a different uh, behavior. It'll say quack and then the name of the class, you know, whatever. You can do whatever you want in this, of course. So in a game, maybe it would do something completely different. So this is, you can see this is be pretty flexible for some type of, uh, it's almost like a poor man's polymorphism for duck typing. So you, I mean, you can do a lot of really powerful things with this. In other languages like Kylan, like I showed, you would have to uh, have an interface. So maybe this would be the quack interface or something, right? So you can see how this could be really flexible. And I show this as a, these are inner classes here, but if you wanted to have in the, in uh, Godot land, you would make maybe other nodes or sprites or something to that effect, but it's the same idea. If the, any of those sprites, if you create a script in there that has the quack method, you could pass to this and it would work. Um, so you kind of get the idea there. All right, so now I'm gonna show an example where you might run into a little bit of trouble. Uh, so let's say we have a walk method to go off that same theme <laughs> and the ostrich class is the only one that implements the walk method. So if you had some other part in this loop where you wanted to actually do and call call walk on any of these, you, you, you're you not guaranteed that. And so this is where it's not suitable for that particular purpose. So you'd have to actually check. So in here we'd have to check duck has method walk. And then we can call walk. And so you can see here that walk was only called once with ostrich. So I really don't recommend having to do this unless you, I mean, well, I mean, you may have a case where you want, want a one off to do something like this. But for the most part, you want to make sure that whatever you're operating on follows a specific contract. So if you're doing this loop and you're running through, uh, and it, it, let's say duck, your definition of what a duck is for this loop has to have walk and quack in it, um, then this pro, none of these other goose or duck follow that contract. So that would be a problem. Um, so this is where you run into those problems where your architecture kind of doesn't really make a lot of sense maybe and so just I mean just be careful with how how flexible it is and make sure that you understand that at runtime this is going to be resolved um, this is not necessarily that bad but you can have a lot of extra code around stuff like this that can start springing out of these assumptions so to get around this I would probably if, if all your uh, birds or whatever here uh, want to follow the same pattern, they should probably all have a walk method in them. And that would probably solve your problem altogether. And if you force yourself to follow patterns like that where it's predictable, um, then you're going to have much easier to maintain code and a lot less headache and debugging in the long run. So, so 
So yeah, now when we run, all of them have a walk, and we can just go ahead and remove this. So a simple fix for a simple problem, but this is pretty contrived. So just understand this and just try to avoid any kind of weird patterns where you're not following your own uh, style, really. So treat it like it, treat it like more like a formal interface for most of the stuff. But but you know with the flexibility you have with duck typing, you don't have to formally say, "Oh, this is a duck interface" or this kind of thing. So there's your caution. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, just like or comment and subscribe to uh, get more tutorials like this. And feel free to ask me any questions below. And also, all the code will be included in the links below.